Hello friends, yesterday Microsoft Build 2024 started and with every build there's a lot of new.net news, a lot of new Azure functionalities and a lot of new enhancement that has been introduced. In today's video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be seeing all of these different functionalities in a very quick summary and we're going to be seeing all of the different implementation that has been added. And one of the most exciting features that has been announced is .NET Aspire is now in GA which means it's general availability which means it is the production ready version of .NET Aspire which is I'm very exciting for. I will do a dedicated video covering this in in a bit more detail later this week but for now let us focus on build and all of the news that has been announced within build so let's get started so the first news that i'm really excited of which i mentioned but we're going to be covering in a bit more detail later this week which is that net aspire is now generally available which means that it is production ready so if you don't know that net aspire is a way where you can actually have cloud native development on dot for dot net so you can actually build your entire cloud native functionalities within .NET Aspire and then deploy it to Azure and AWS. It's a very cool feature. I'll have, uh, I have covered in a bit more detail, actually in a lot more detail over the last few months. So I'm going to be linking it here somewhere so you're able to watch it. But .NET Aspire is, if you're not a .NET developer, it's, this is the right time because .NET Aspire will basically simplify everything you're doing when it comes to cloud. So with the .NET Aspire new stack, there's a lot of new functionality that has been added and now it's being generally available. So basically with .NET Aspire, you'll get a full development dashboard in order for you to monitor all of your services on the cloud. You're gonna get a lot of different components that you can utilize. You're gonna have built-in services coverability. So you have a lot of interdependencies between your services. .NET Aspire will provide you with the services coverability. So you'll be able to find everything that you need and basically your application will be able to communicate much more easier. You'll have a lot of orchestration mechanisms. So if you want to build an orchestration platform within your, within your application, that not Aspire is the way to do so. And it will facilitate your deployment because basically you can deploy to Kubernetes, you can deploy to different cloud providers. It makes it very easy to do so. So how you can get .NET Aspire, you basically can go do it through the CLI, Visual Studio, as well as Visual Studio Code, dev kits, and there's a lot of different ways and different videos to take you through step by step of how you can actually accomplish this. Why does not aspire? It's, I mean, it's an amazing tool. It will provide you observability, resiliency, scalability, and manageability. Everything is baked in and it's open source. You can have a lot of different uh, providers. So you can use MongoDB, you can use Redis, you can use Elasticsearch. There's a lot of different extensions that you can actually utilize. It has built in reverse proxies. It uses YARPs for the health check. It is a really uh, amazing uh, piece of uh, code. As well, it allows you to orchestrate local developer experiences. So you can, as you can see here, you can orchestrate different services build independencies on top of each other. Again, all of these has been covered in a lot of more video, but this is just one of the really cool features that has been announced, which is mean general availability, which means production ready grade. And here we can see some of the components that we can actually utilize with Aspire from Redis to Postgres to Azure Storage uh, to Service Bus, etc, etc. And there's way more than these. This are the quick summary of what exists. And basically with .NET Aspire, you'll be able to create, take your idea, build it on the cloud and deploy it very easily and streamline it. So now that we have covered one of the most exciting news for me, now let's see all of the latest enhancement that came from Microsoft Build 2024. So as we might think, the conference was mainly focused on AI, a lot of new AI feature that has been added from AI Copilot to Windows has getting a major refresh with a lot of uh, functionalities built in regarding AI. There's an AI studio that that you can actually utilize a lot of uh, native uh, models that you can now actually have within your, your NPUs, a lot of new machines that has been uh, announced, uh, more integration with OpenAI, a lot of new models coming to Azure AI. It is a wide, basically it is like a day and a park for AI where there is a lot of new functionalities that has been introduced. I'm not going to be delving a lot into the AI space today. We're going to be focusing on the .NET side, but basically it's something that to keep in mind that the main focus of the or the main direction of the build conference was mainly focused on AI. So within .NET and AI, there is a lot of different implementation. So now AI provides you with a tool in order for us to build AI into our application. So this has been enabled through plugins that we can actually integrate within our .NET application. We can utilize OpenAI, Quadrant, Milvis, etc., etc. We can actually take uh, utilize Aspire to uh, orchestrate all of that. There is a lot of different enhancement to the language itself in order for it to support AIs like Tensor T-Type, which basically 
basically allow us to take various computational model that or mathematical model that AI relies on in order for us to actually build our AI model. It's a very uh, deep topic. Uh, I'll make sure to cover it in later videos and we can basically get started building as quickly. So there's a lot of new samples for AI. If we take through them on GitHub now that has been announced, where you can actually take these samples and actually start building your own AI component. So basically you can build your own chat box. You can, all of these you can actually take and basically customize in order for it to fit with your, your own AI model. I'll make sure to create a video to cover at least getting started and how we can actually utilize this. So with that, there's a lot of expansion to the .NET AI ecosystem. So Microsoft and OpenAI have, have strong relationship. With that, there is also Quadrant and Milvius also coming to .NET. So there's a lot of built-in support for these as well. A new functionality in order for us to monitor our LLMs and uh, have observability over them, which is also coming within .NET Aspire and Semantic Kernel will be able to do all of that. We'll be able to monitor as well as observe our LLM app. Again, this is still in infancy. There's a lot of work to be done there, but it's a step in the right direction. Now, when it comes to cloud uh, native development with .NET, uh, there is a lot of new functionality that has been released. And one of the main one is .NET Aspire is now GA ready. And with that, we'll be able to actually utilize all of the new different functionalities that Aspire provide. We already spoke about this, uh, but this is a quick overview around it. And now .NET is uh, Linux native, and this is really exciting. So you don't really have to install extra packages. So you can just do sudo apt update and then sudo apt install.net 8 and you'll be able to get .NET directly available on your Linux machine. So you don't really have to install additional packages. Everything now is fully supported and native to within uh, Linux, and which is really exciting. And as we can see here, how .NET on Ubuntu basically utilize 45% less footprint in order for it to run, which is really, really good. As well, there is a lot of uh, new enhancement when it comes to the garbage collector. So to basically reduce the memory trace uh, that we actually utilize within when our application is running. So this will allow us to have a bit more flexibility as well. It allows our application to be much more nimble. So because it does not require a lot more memory, it will able to run in way more uh, spaces and basically in a lot more uh, servers as well as uh, it will allow us to have a bit more flexibility when it comes to Kubernetes because basically the nodes could be smaller and this will help to. So there's a lot of new enhancements when it comes to garbage collector and it will allow us to increase the speeds of the requests uh, which is coming in. So it will actually able to accelerate our application. So with also with that, there is a C Sharp 13 uh, introduction and .NET 9 is now in preview 4. And with that, there are a lot of new enhancement. And one of these is uh, C Sharp 13. C Sharp 13 introduced a lot of new enhancement when it comes to uh, params and spans and basically types, interfaces. I'm not going to be delving into all of this. If you're interested, let me know. I'll create a video where I can delve into all of these different information about C Sharp 13 and how we can actually take uh, advantage of them. And when it comes to web development, now this is going to be like a lot of uh, the new enhancements as well. So now there is a full stack web platform where it has the web UI, the APIs, the data, the server, the security and tooling. So we don't really have to stitch a lot of things together. I still have not experimented with it as much as I like to, but from what I saw already, it's really uh, interesting and it could be the, the one shop stop uh, for everything we need with .NET in conjunction with Aspire. I'll make sure to create a video where we're covering all of this together. So there's now built-in support for open AI document generation. And now there's built-in support for open API document generation. So as we know, with then .NET 9 Swagger is not going to be uh, built in into the uh, template anymore and uh, because the Swagger application is not uh, supported and regularly maintained. So for that, uh, for .NET 9, in order for us to have a full API documentation, it's now built in the API doc documentation generation into it, which is really interesting. So we can see here, as soon as we add the middleware map to open API, we will directly have that documentation available for us. There is also a lot of enhancement when it comes to distributed application, when it comes to caching and hybrid cache and this will also fit within distributed applications within Aspire and there is also the full stack web AI, web UI with the Blazor. Blazor. Blazor got a lot of new enhancement when it comes to components, web sockets as well as rendering. Maui was on a different Maui also which is a different section which also got updated during the conference or basically got announced during the conference so if you don't know Maui allow you to create applications for iOS, Android, Windows, Mac all within the single source code and Maui is a really powerful tool that you can actually create a single application for multiple platforms and within and within build a lot of enhancement has been introduced to maui a lot of new performance enhancements and the quality there's more support for the ecosystem more native apis from these devices are being added to support now we can actually 
have a NuGet package approach, which means that we can actually package our code into NuGet packages and then utilize them within MAUI. So as we can see here, for example, when it comes to uh, the .NET ecosystem, if you want to build a Blazor uh, application, it is a fully website and uh, progressive web application. If you want to have a hybrid approach, we can use Blazor and .NET MAUI, where basically we're able to have web application in some aspects as well as fully native application on the other one. On the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, sorry, if we want to have fully native application, we can utilize .NET MAUI, which utilizes XAML as the front-end language, as well as C Sharp to uh, create all of the logic behind it. It's a very interesting tool. If you have not experienced uh, or experiment with it, I highly suggest that you do so. As well as I have mentioned, uh, .NET uh, 9 Preview 4 has been released today. So this is the mainly the news that .NET has released. So we're still only on day one of Microsoft Build. And there's a lot of new announcement that's going to come within the next couple of days as well. A lot of the session that has that will be shared in order for us to learn about all of these new capabilities. Uh, I'll make sure to create different videos to cover other exciting fun uh, features and functionality that has been released. I hope this video was helpful. It's just like a quick introduction and basically just a news update about everything which is going on in the world of Tottenham. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.